Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox Reviews and Weekend Watches. We are back after our triumphant first episode last Sunday. I have an incredible spread on the table, and I'm going to gratify with immediate clickbait material. You saw the thumbnail, now see the watch. This is the one year only Patek Philippe 5070P, 42 millimeters in platinum. The fair estimate is that between 150 and 200 of these were produced from approximately 2008 to 2009. It is the rarest of the serial production 5070s, and in my personal opinion, the most attractive. An explosive, double scale, sunburst blue dial. You could see Arabic numerals applique in white gold, and the timepiece with a almost pagoda style, double stepped bezel. It has a broad saucer-like appearance on the wrist. It's impossible to think that this in 1998 as a yellow gold model was ahead of the entire oversized watch craze and it was a Patek Philippe leading that trend from the front. Now of course this watch came a decade later and it was the build-out model for the 5070. In my opinion there is no finer manual wind chronograph and yes I've owned and loved the Giger Le Coult Duomet but for sheer panache and soul sizzle style and yes substance this is a hard watch to beat now it's only about 48 millimeters from lug to lug so don't be afraid of the 42 millimeter case which of course was styled in the fashion of a prototype pilot's watch that was itself 46 millimeters and you'll find that one in the Patek Museum you might find this one on your wrist full platinum the mass is incredible and of course because you know to expect on a platinum Patek Philippe the top Vesselton diamond between the lugs Optimal use of a diamond on a men's watch. Turn it all over, the great Lemagne based caliber CH2770. Now you can see it's based on the Lemagne 2310 that as the Omega 321 went to the moon almost exactly half a century ago. It is a big, slow beating movement. 18,000 vibrations per hour. You can see the free sprung gyromax style balance and you can also see an enormous handmade brigade overcoil helping the watch to keep excellent timing in any orientation. It is a large and lush movement finished with the traditional Poinçon de Genève. You can see the Geneva hallmark on the balance cock. And you'll also appreciate the fact that this lateral clutch chronograph, by the way, a visible and beautifully hand-finished lateral clutch, easy to appreciate. Now I'm going to draw the lateral clutch out of contact, I'm going to reset everything, watch the hammers fall on the hard cams at center. That is why you can keep your vertical clutch. More efficient, yes. More technically advanced, more modern, yes. But more beautiful, no. You have your capped and black polished column wheel, and then you have that lateral clutch. You have Cote de Genève, you have an engine turned perlage on the base plate, you can just barely see it. Every screw head is black polished with a, a chamfered slot, and you can see that the actual levers and yoke of the chronograph are all satin finished across their top and mirrored beveled on their side. This is an incredible timepiece. There's half the show on one watch. All right, let's talk about something that is likewise extravagant, but of a very different sensibility and of a slightly different era. Back in 2004, IWC was warming up to launch its first ever series production Portuguese tourbillon, and we got this model right here, the 5042. Now, the 5042, also known as the tourbillon mister, features a flying tourbillon on its dial side, 44.2 millimeters in diameter in white gold. This example was built from 2000 to 2009, it is an outstanding saucer-like limited edition of 250 pieces. When I use that term saucer, I mean it is broad, it is flat. It's like a saucer or a flying saucer, a horological UFO, if you will, on your wrist. Now, if you look closely, you can see that flying tourbillon, so named because it has no upper bridge, but that flying tourbillon is beating away at a quirky 19,800 vibrations per hour, and you can see there is a blue oxidized overcoil hairspring just over the balance. This is a handsome watch in every regard. What IWC describes as an ardoise or sunburst silver gray dial, also Cote de Genève surrounding the tourbillon on the dial side, seven day power reserve, automatic winding, applique white gold Arabic numerals, white gold leaf style hands, turn it all over, and you can see the manufacturer caliber automatic 50,900, so 5,900. This is a 44 joule, five position adjusted, oversized automatic descended from the same movement used in the Portuguese or automatic and the big pilot's watch. You could see that there is a 
Ceramic Paul Peloton Bidirectional Winding System of IWC's own design, of course, harking back to the Albert Peloton designed ratchet system of the 1950s that became one of the most efficient and enduring automatic systems designed in Switzerland, copied by everyone, but only invented by IWC. You can see it here at work energizing your watch. And of course, you have a rose gold medallion inside the winding mass. All of this about 37 millimeters across. It's one of the world's largest automatic calibers. The timepiece looks good on the wrist and with a full white gold buckle, it is secure. You're not going to drop this one while donning or removing at bedside. It's actually a dress watch that has a little bit of a sporting sensibility precisely because the gray dial and the white metal make it a bit more casual and versatile than if it were, say, rose gold. Now let's talk about something more elemental, if you will, but no less rosy. I spoke of rose gold, and now I give you a rose dial. To be more precise, this is a salmon dial, and this is a lovely 1997 serial number, Rolex Datejust, 36 millimeters. This is the 16200 stainless steel with a sensational rose salmon sunburst dial with white gold applique Roman numerals. You'll also note the conical bezel profile. This was the first generation Datejust with a sapphire crystal and a 100 meter case together, so it wears like a modern watch. And you can see it is a very agreeable timepiece on a smaller wrist, less than 45 millimeters lug to lug. I can recommend it for a small wrist, but I can also tell you that if you want a more discreet Rolex that's not a rotating bezel sports watch, that's not some sort of an oversized complication like the Sky Dweller or the Yachtmaster 2 or the most recognizable chronograph in the world like the Daytona, you can wear this watch with an element of discretion and with the combination of the steel case and the salmon dial, it has an unbeatable visual punch against 1997. You can see that this one's almost a vintage watch by the standard of such things, 22 years old and yet wearable every day like a modern timepiece. Now, there are going to be other Rolex watches. We're going to go sequentially through time. Jump back and then jump way forward. Let's talk a little bit about a pilot's watch. And if you want a pilot's watch as luxurious as they came back in 1989, then you wanted a full gold GMT. But if you wanted the utmost in elegance, you wanted the full gold GMT on a factory jubilee bracelet. Now this really is the apogee of elegance. As you can see, the graceful combination of yellow gold and black dial with black bezel is explosive and punchy. Though it's a 40 millimeter watch, it looks bigger, far, far larger in fact, simply because the wrist presence is so pronounced. Now the jubilee bracelet always ever available on the GMT from the first examples in the 50s to the arrival of the super case in the late 2000s. This was a watch that represented a rare combo, as the full gold was unusual and the full jubilee in full gold rarer still. It's a watch that has a great deal of substance to it, as it still is a travel watch that's swimmable, sapphire crystal, high beat movement, 100 meter case, and of course the dual time functionality with original tritium dial. So this is a watch like the Datejust we just discussed that's somewhere between modern watch and vintage watch, still wearable like a modern watch, but I must admit it also has the cred and the soul of a vintage watch given its age, 1989. Can you believe it was 30 years ago? Before we jump back to Rolex, we're gonna mix things up a little bit because I don't like to get too deep into one brand. Let's jump even farther back in time. If you wanted the ultimate pilot's watch of 1968, then you wanted a big Navitimer and you might've been wearing the 816. The big Navitimer, so named because it features a 48 millimeter case. If you thought this was just a design for the Bentley series in the modern era, think again. This features the oversized differential geared slide rule bezel calculator. And as you can see, squint at it and you might be able to note the origin of the Fernand Bertou chronometer of the modern era. There's a little bit of that watch in the shape of this watch. Now the timepiece has a gloriously domed plexiglass over its original tritium dial. You can see the silvered and snailed counters. The reason this watch wears on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist is because like the Patek, it's only 48 millimeters lug to lug. So though it's an almost 49 millimeter watch, it doesn't wear that way. This timepiece, technically the 816-72 powered by a Valju 7736 manual wind internally that beats away to stately and vintagey 18,000 vibration per hour. Now I mentioned there is a differential gearing to the slide rule. You could see how the internal scale moves faster than the exterior bezel and if you've ever seen this little hatch on the side of one of the big Navitimers 
you might have thought maybe that's a helium escape valve. In fact, that is the cover for the differential system that allows the inner bezel to run faster than the outer bezel. It's a wonderful calculator. I'm going to create a little how-to to teach people how to use this bezel, but you can already look up online how to use it. It takes 30 seconds to learn and a lifetime to enjoy. That is a wonderful look back. Let's look forward once more. Okay, Rolex, two different takes on big date justs. Both blue dial, both stainless steel, both oyster bracelet, but very different character. You could see in my right hand, a date just two. Arabic, well, no, but Roman numerals. Roman numerals are stylish too. The thing is, the Roman numerals are not loomed, whereas you have the option of loomed or not loomed on versions of these two watches. I will mention that the difference between them is going to be internal. Next to each other, it's almost impossible to tell the proportional difference in the width of the bezel, though if you look closely, you could see that the bezel of the Datejust 2 is just a little bit wider. Hard to tell, certainly. The blues are identical sunburst, but the reality is that this watch has a three-day power reserve, and this watch has a 48-hour power reserve. So if you're one to sort through a collection and shuffle through your watches, it may be convenient to have a watch that can run for two days without attention and not have to be reset. I'll also mention that the timepiece featuring the fluted white gold bezel has maybe a little bit more flair on the outside, whereas the Roman numerals on the inside arguably give this one a bit more flair on the dial side. So you can go with the practicality of the loomed dial, or you can go with the style of the Roman numerals. I will mention this, both of these watches are now super hot, as Rolex is now allocating, that is telling dealers how many Datejust 41s they will receive. Previously, that was just Daytonas, that was GMTs, and that was Submariners. This is now the fourth watch in terms of modern Rolex popularity. This is now the watch that dealers have a wait list for their customers to file up, queue up, and await delivery. It used to be that you could buy these out of the case, no longer. Fortunately, we have those in stock immediately. Which one do I like better? I like the Roman numerals, but I have to admit the loomed dial makes that an all the time watch for me. So we go back real quick and you can see the 126334, just a more versatile watch. Let me throw it on the wrist to represent the size of our 41 millimeter date justs. The 41, Datejust 41 came out in 2016. The Datejust 2 came out in 2009. Now you can also get your choice of loomed and non-loomed dials on the Datejust 41, but you also have the option of the Jubilee bracelet or the Oyster, a choice that was not available on the Datejust 2. This is a timepiece I could wear every day, and it might be the most versatile watch on the table tonight. Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about a watch brand that almost never gets love on this channel, or for that matter, anywhere else in the industry. And frankly, that's a bit of a crime, because Ulysse Nordin of Le Loque, Switzerland, makes some of the most interesting timepieces available at any price. This model, 500 pieces, limited edition, platinum for 2012, is the El Toro GMT Plus Minus Perpetual Calendar. 52 millimeters lug to lug. The timepiece is 43 millimeters in diameter, and you can see that it has a wonderful versatility about it with its ceramic bezel to block scratches, the platinum case to give you richness, but the white metal to keep it stealthy, and then you have the rubber strap, which is conforming in profile, that allows the watch to wear well on a small wrist. It has a dual time functionality, it's 100 meters water resistant. It has a perpetual calendar. It's automatic winding, and it's a COSC certified Swiss chronometer. In short, it's brilliant. The timepiece also has a lot of fun functions. Take a quick look at this perpetual calendar. Do you see anything unusual? I can set the perpetual calendar in either direction. Note how the month is jumping forward and backwards. I can set the perpetual calendar in either direction without damaging it. And I also have the functionality of these GMT triggers so I can travel and adjust my watch to suit. You'll also appreciate the fact that the watch has a wonderful bridge across the perpetual calendar windows showing you a double digit year. Yes, it has the year as well as the day, the month, and the double digit date. Cote de Genève on the dial side, beautifully arrayed under that matte finished bridge. It features bi Arabic numerals, the 12 and the 6, and there's a handsome flange in board which you can see is a silver metallic featuring individual loomed indices laid on the inside of the bezel. Turn it all over. And you can see the UN caliber, 32. 
COSC chronometer, automatic winding, handsomely finished. How much do you love that silicon disc that's been laid inside the winding mass? This is as good as it gets in high horology, innovation in high complications, and very wearable with its water resistance. I know that we have a fan out there who is currently going with a custom Ox und Junior who would have been all about this watch two weeks ago before we started that process. Now let's talk about a timepiece that is different from anything else on the table. And I do mean anything else in the industry. That is the Resence Type 5 dive watch. Resence, designed in Belgium, built in Switzerland, offering watches that use a planetary drive system for a regulator style dial. Their most advanced and intriguing watches are the five and the three that have oil inside the dial so that particularly for the diver, the index of refraction for the crystal and the oil being exactly the same, you can easily view this watch from any angle above or below the waves. Now the timepiece was their first diver, a light duty diver at 100 meters, but still swimmable anywhere you and I are likely to go. Titanium case, but you can barely see it. The watch is mostly its crystal. Let me show you how some of this works. Okay, you have a rotating bezel that orbits the dial. You have a regulator dial system whereby there's hours, radial minutes running around the outside, and then your constant seconds indicator known as the runner. All of this is loomed. There is a temperature gauge so you know when you're in the danger zone for the oil that's underneath this crystal. And then on the case back, you have the ability to set the watch. Let me make sure I unlock it first. You have the ability to set the watch by turning the case back. And as you can see, everything moves, not just relative to the scales outboard, but all of the indications of the dial move relative to each other. You can see the runner spinning away right there. So it is a diving, oil-filled titanium regulator. Did you get all of that? Good. Now turn it on the side and you can see because you do set and wind the watch, it's automatic, but you can manually wind it. Using the case back, there is a locking system on the reverse side so you can alternate between setup and winding and locking the whole system out so you don't accidentally budge the minute hand just as you have a unidirectional bezel you have a locking dial turn it over you can see the rotor of the movement it's an ETA 2824 automatic tank tough and you can see one of the most curious advisories you will ever find on the back of a luxury watch which is contains petroleum I'm pretty sure that is the only watch I've ever encountered that contains petroleum. This is independent watchmaking at its best. Resin's making only about 450 watches a year, of which a distinct minority will be this Type 5 diver. I adore Resin's, and I adore those watches. I'm more likely to buy a Type 3 at 42 millimeters, but I will tell you the 46 is wearable even on my wrist. Let's jump across the border from Switzerland to Deutschland and talk about one of Langa's finest. Launched in 2009 in 200 pieces with a Grand Faux enamel dial, this is the Richard Langa Pour Le Marit. 200 pieces in rose gold. It's a 40.5 millimeter case with blued alpha style hands. You've got the double stepped enamel dial with lovely little red Arabic numerals for the quarters, stylized Roman numerals, that is the signature of the Richard Langa series. And then you turn it over and you can see Langa caliber L044. 04, the year they started work on the movement. Now it is a sensation. 33 joules adjusted in a chronometer style five positions. You could see there's a fusée and chain with the chain containing 300 or rather 636 pieces. It's one fifth of a millimeter wide, but the chain itself can vertically suspend two kilograms of mass. It's that tough. You could see that there are jewels set in chaton pocket watch style there is a three-quarter style bridge pocket watch style there is german silver a nickel copper zinc alloy thus the copper giving it that golden hue pocket watch style and a freehand engraved balance cock pocket watch style or i should say langa style there's engine turning on the base plate mirrored on glage on the edge of every bridge and we have both fire blued and black polished screws here now watch how the chain transfers between the barrel and the fusée. The fusée, you can see that there's a stop work system because the balance begins beating immediately. It stops itself when it can no longer keep good time. But the fusée and chain work essentially like a bicycle gearing system. So as the mainspring barrel winds down and loses torque, its mechanical advantage as the chain rides the spiral up the fusée, its mechanical advantage increases. So you have constant torque to the escapement, therefore you have better timekeeping 
housekeeping for the 36 hour chronometric power reserve of this watch. And you can see that sensational chain transfer going on inside the watch. So it is a lot of fun to wind. You can see that there is a Baroque pocket watch style click and click spring. The Ratchet wheel beneath is black polished. You can see there's black polish all over this movement from the cap above the mainspring barrel all the way to the black polish of the swan's neck adjustment system. Throw it on the wrist. You can see it's not a huge watch. Any wrist should be able to pull off this 40.5. And I have to admit, while I like the black dial, subsequent version that came out in 218 pieces in 2016, I actually like this version better for its warm and rare Grand Faux enamel dial. It is exquisite inside and out, a rare long, as impressive on the dial side as on the reverse. Now, let us talk about Switzerland's enamel dial repost to that Alango Unzona. This is the Laurent Ferrier Gale Micro Rotor Traveler, a 10 piece limited edition with a Grand Faux enamel dial centered on North America. You could see this 10 piece limited edition, 41 millimeters in white gold, features a travel time complication. You're able to jump the local hour hand in either direction. And as you can see, it even drives the date in either direction as you cross the international date line. I should mention there's also a second time zone at 9 o'clock that reads in a 24-hour format. So pull the crown out. You could see there is a 24-hour format second time zone over at 9 o'clock. It gives the dial a beautiful balance and makes it quite intuitive. The hands as well as the indices, Asagai or Spear style, are all made of white gold. Turn it all over and you have the exquisite Dual direct impulse natural escapement, Laurent Ferrier caliber, Laurent Ferrier 230. Take my finger oils off, appreciate some of the finer points here. 72 hour power reserve, a ratchet based 22 karat winding mass, a micro rotor that uses a jeweled staff for utmost smooth operation and silence. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five interior angles, the sharp cleft of an interior angle being the second most difficult finishing feat to achieve alongside black polish, of which you will see the art on the bridge for the rotor, the skeletonized half bridge for the balance wheel, as well as all the screw heads. You can see there is immaculately aligned Cote de Genève laid down with an abrasive wheel across the bridges. There is also a overcoil hairspring on a free sprung balance adjusted in six positions, not the chronometer standard five. And of course you have that dual direct impulse natural escapement with nickel phosphorus escape wheels and a blocking system made of silicon integrating high-tech materials into a system inspired by the natural escapement of Abraham Louis Breguet. It is as well finished, if not better finished, relative to anything you will find from Patek Philippe. Throw it on the wrist, you can see the pebble-like galley case is elegant. Although fairly imposing, it might be a bit larger than you bargain for a Geneva style dress watch. You can see the lovely undulations of the enamel dial, which is never perfectly smooth, but exquisitely handmade. And you can see how this is truly an artisanal fired product. Grand Faux up to 20 firings at 800 degrees centigrade. And you can see that the landmass featuring additional enamel above the bodies of water to create the image of North America, as well as the great white North of Canada and Greenland. Okay, let's talk a little bit about a watch that crosses the border one more time. Over in Germany, we have Glasuta Original, which, properly speaking, is the original pre-communist Alango Unzona. So this is the company that is the direct successor to the firm founded by F. A. Longa in 1845. The watch you see here is the 39 millimeter red gold Panograph. It came out in 2002 using the caliber 61. Caliber 6101 is featured here, uses a triple sweep indicator system to indicate minutes. So you can see it features 10 minutes right up to 30. So you have 0 to 10, 10 to 20, and then 20 to 30. And the system also operates with a little bit of an inverted trigger system. It is a flyback chronograph, and as you can see, the reset and the start-stop trigger are reversed. It also features a double-digit date with a quick-set system, and it is quite intuitive to read, very simple to read at a glance, and powered by a movement finished as well as anything from Longa. Caliber 6101 is as good as it gets. You see it is a column wheel, lateral clutch chronograph, and I'll activate it so you can see the mechanism operating. 
handsome manual wind 28.8 beat rate 42 hour power reserve it too has a freehand engraved half bridge for the balance and the balance helping to time both the civil time and the chronograph functions which take a look right here they operate through a fully jeweled lateral clutch that is the ultimate imprimatur of quality, a fully jeweled lateral clutch. Generally, this is a component where you will see bushings used. You can see black polish, satin finish, engine turned prolage, Cote de Genève, or we'll call them glasuta stripes because we're not in Switzerland. And then you can see that all of the levers of the chronograph are straight grained, blued screws and blackened screws both. This is a truly spectacular watch. And how much do you love the return spring, the tensioning spring on the lateral clutch right there? How awesome is that gooseneck spring? That's as good as it gets. And believe it or not, all of this water resistant to 50 meters, solidly more than you expect for a dress watch. And it's also fun to play with a flyback chronograph. Restart and reset with one push of a trigger. Made beautifully in Germany. Now let's head back to Switzerland and talk about a very different kind of rose gold watch. This is the Omega Constellation Daydate. And don't look now, but I think we might finally have an acceptable application of decorative gems on a men's dress watch. I love the Roman numerals in the bezel of this Manhattan style Griffin Claw constellation. We call that because the Manhattan style, as it was called by Omega, came out in 1982, and it's become one of the company's top sellers in the Far East, which is why it has been so enduring. In the West, a lot of folks say a pie pan or nothing for a Connie, but globally, this is what the Connie is, and I love that integration of the diamonds for the numerals. Now, on the dial side, you can see that there are rose gold indices, which have a deliciously pinched profile. They're actually wasp-waisted and then faceted on their tops. It's a fully loomed dial. The watch is 100 meters water-resistant and 38 millimeters in diameter. The integration of the bracelet would make Gerald Genta proud. I actually love this bracelet. I'm obsessed with it. It feels like the modern-day successor to the old 1970s Omega Lobster Tail bracelets. Look at how seamless that is and also how flexible it is. 45 millimeters lug to lug, so you can fit this around the smallest of small wrists. And on the case back, Omega sparing no expense, giving you caliber 8612 that includes 18 carat, Rotor and 18 karat red gold full bridge for the balance. 60 hour power reserve, coaxial chronometer, and again, 100 meters water resistant and effectively amagnetic with an SI14 silicon hairspring, a double quick set system for the day and the date. Now you can see to better effect those wasp waisted, pinched, and faceted indices. The attention to detail here is astounding. And I cannot say enough good things about this Griffin Claw Connie, so named because you have these little flanking grief or griffin claws on the flanks of the case at nine and three okay too much gold too much diamonds well how about some dress watch detox with folks who do it better than anyone else the good folks from frankfurt this is zin spezial urn and it is the ultimate spezial urn the u1 u-boat steel 44 millimeters tegmented black coated bezel the ultimate scratch shield the watch is 1000 meters water resistant and truly built like a submarine for your wrist now you might ask to what end u-boat steel well the u-boat stall is effectively corrosion resistant to the same level as rolex 904l which means you do not need to rinse it when you withdraw it from seawater or chlorine rich environments such as swimming pools it will not tarnish oxidize or degrade in any way moreover it has about a 100 vickers hardness advantage over standard 316 so it's about 350 vickers to a standard steels roughly 200 to 250. you'll also note that it features an offset centered crown that off centered crown ensuring that regardless of which hand you choose to wear it's not going to dig your wrist and it's surprisingly wearable across the wrist as you can see i'm having no trouble wearing this 44. Let's quickly break it down and take a look at some of the details. You can see that the bezel as fitted to the watch, which we need to hear the detent. Listen to the ratchet because it's a great one. That is about as sharp as any bezel I've encountered. Luminor submersible, Doxa sub, you've met your match. Now the bezel itself is black coated and then tegmented underneath so you don't get the eggshell effect of normal black DLC 
component where normally the steel underneath is very soft relative to the very hard coating. And thus, if you take a hit, generally the steel beneath collapses, creating a crack on the external DLC. Well, here you have tegament, which is carbon diffused steel, and then you have the black coating over it so that it cannot simply collapse under the hard black. The result is one of the most scratch and scuff resistant combos I've ever encountered. You could see that the dial is no nonsense. Black, white, and red. You can read it from across a room. The timepiece features a captive bezel system, so you can actually see that the bezel is held on by little lateral screws, so you can't accidentally snap it off against a door frame or an obstruction underwater. I'm more likely to snap off a bezel against a door frame. I don't know about you, but it's also nice to know that if you do want to dive, you're getting the best equipment. The bracelet which is beautifully blasted and finished like the case, features hex screw fixed links, and then internally, a wonderfully secure fold-out dive extension that feels redoubtable and substantial. So even if you're like me and you're never gonna dive because you get cold and you hate the water, this is a great way to wear your watch over a thick winter coat or a sweater. You can see on the back, U1 1000 meters, and of course, U-boat style. As good as it gets from our friends in Frankfurt, this is one hardcore tool watch diver. Now let's, Go back to German-speaking Switzerland from IWC Schaffhausen to Moser. H. Moser and C, since being purchased by MELB Holdings in 2012, has built some of the finest watches in Switzerland. Quality, finish, invention, they have it all. 41 millimeters, this is the Endeavor Center Seconds. You can see that glorious black lacquer dial in a rose gold case. Look at the complexity of Moser's case construction. There are mirrored and evacuated lug profiles, a vertical satin finish, and then a concave bezel giving way to a dial with applique rose gold indices and glorious leaf hands at center. Turn it all over, and you can see that the Moser caliber itself is as impressive as the watch. Now, this HMC 341 has a 7-day chronometric power reserve but it will in fact run for nine. Twin mainspring barrels with jewels set by screw fixed chiton, all screws black polished. You can see they use a unique double crested Cote de Genève across their bridges. And then there is a full bridge for the balance and overcoil hairspring. It beats way to slow and stately 18,000 vibrations per hour, just below a case back power reserve indicator. The entire escapement and balance comes out as a platform for immediate servicing. Drop in, drop out, get your watch back immediately. That's a brilliant system they've devised. And it even has a solid 14 karat gold escapement system that operates with minimal lubrication. So there is very little degradation as the, as the lubricants in your watch age. There's so little on the escapement that What's normally a limiting factor between services is not a factor here. These watches have no trouble because of that escapement going five years between services. And look at the attention to detail with a little kerf on the underside of the crown to make it easier to dig in your fingernail. This is as good as it gets. It even has an overcoil hairspring made by hand. Moser making lovely things and doing so in the shadows. Let's talk about perhaps a more heralded independent. I believe Moser will eventually be the German-Swiss FP Journe, but until we get there, there is FP Journe. Out of Geneva, the Black Series, produced by FP Journe, platinum cases, black dials, not just retailer exclusives for Espace and Boutique, but you must prove that you've bought a Journe new to get the Black Series watch. The black label here, the Octoloon, seven day power reserve, as it will in fact run for seven days, though it is advertised for less, the open secret is you can get a full week between windings, even though 120 hours is represented on the power reserve. There's a moon phase down at seven o'clock, and as you can see, a lovely hobnail on the center with the biomorphic Jorn hands and stylized Arabic numerals that wax and wane in size to essentially trace the arc of the outer dial. On the case back, you've got the Octa Caliber. The Octa Caliber is a beautiful 18 karat work of art. So this is solid gold, not just the rotor, but the bridges and the plates. Free sprung, beaten away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. The rotor is 22 karat, not the 21, 18 karat, or even tungsten that you see everywhere in the industry. It has a lovely barley corn pattern across the top with black polished FP Journe crest, circular Cote de Genève over the bridges. There's a mirrored englage, black polished screws, and an engine turned prolage on the base plate. And again, this is a remarkably long legged movement. If you like to cycle through a collection, forget that three day Rolex that I showed you before. A full week gives you the flexibility to wear your whole collection and come back to this one. 
my goodness, we've got a lot of watches on the table tonight and so many options. Let's talk about something that is sensational. Let's talk about something. Where should we go? That offers dynamite in an affordable package. If you want maximum bang, and I mean TNT for your buck, you want Grand Seiko. This is the SBGH045. I previewed it on Brian's show on Wednesday, but I'm showing you it in its pomp right here. An oxblood dial somewhere between red and brown, lacquer over a metallic base, all hand-finished indices and dauphine hands, which are both faceted with polish on their flanks and satin on their top. You can see the 44GS case, entirely tin plate black polished with that lovely polyhedron form, the 44GS case design, probably the most recognizable Grand Seiko shape having been with the brand since the 44GS of 1967. This watch is titanium. This watch is 40 millimeters. This watch has a high beat 36,000 vibration per hour 9S caliber on the inside that you can enjoy through the case back viewing sapphire. The watch is 100 meters water resistant. The movement is hand regulated. The case is hand finished and so too is the dial. This watch is the complete package. How would I describe that dial? I would say it's a living, breathing burgundy for your eyes, not your palate. Throw it on the wrist. Despite the high beat rate, 55 hour power reserve, you can't do much better than that guys. With a high beat movement, that beats out the El Primero by five full hours. Throw it on the wrist, it'll wear on almost any wrist. 46 millimeters, lug to lug. A nice, friendly alternative to a Datejust 41 or a Datejust 2. That is a handmade and hand-finished watch. And I suppose we have to finish with a bang. And I've got a watch built for the cause. I've shown you this watch in platinum, and now, behold, the Malt Perpetual Calendar Chronograph in yellow gold. 39 millimeters in the most traditional of golds. It also has that most traditional of Vacheron standout style features. Downright Baroque, no, Rococo lug forms. The Malt collection, and this watch came out in 2000, was not originally a tonneau case collection. Rather, it was defined by the shape of the lugs. In the grandest traditions of 1920s, 30s, 40s, and 50s Vacheron, the lugs define this watch. Perpetual calendar chronograph, how much do you love that engraved moon phase? The timepiece featuring the same basic movement that we had in the Patek Philippe 5070 at the beginning of the episode. This is Vacheron Constantin Caliber. 1141, same big slow beat balance, same basic architecture, La Magna 2310 Bausch, but finished in a very distinctly Vacheron style. God is in the details here, but one feature I particularly love, and you can barely see it over the hairspring, which is an overcoil, there is a hooking guard, a wire that runs from the adjacent bridge to the balance cock that prevents shock from allowing the overcoil hairspring to double up over the regulator. The details here are what make high horology a treat. Vacheron made this movement its own, and thanks to a solid case back, you get all of the precious metal and the ability to appreciate what lies beneath. This is reference 47112, the Malt Perpetual Calendar Chronograph with a hunter case in yellow gold, as good as it gets on weekend watches. And that, my fellow friends, Watch enthusiasts, watch junkies, watch buyers, and watch collectors is our show. Comment in the box below what you liked most and what you'd like to see here next time. I will see you on Monday's Watches Tonight, and then cycle, rinse, repeat. Have a great weekend. Be well, be happy, have fun. Thanks to you, thanks to my crew. Time out, Tim out, and thank you for logging on.